Hi there, I'm Eric Siegel, and today we're going to be checking out the water bottle survival kit made by Rothko. So the kit comes in this plastic water bottle, and there's a carabiner attached to it, so we'll go ahead and take that off. And we'll go ahead and cut the tag off too. Put it in. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and cut the tag off too. All right, so we've got a plastic water bottle here, thousand milliliters or one liter, and it's BPA free. And the bottle seems to be pretty good construction. And you know, on the surface, this seems to be a pretty good idea. You know, you're going to need water storage when you're in a survival situation and on the surface, it seems like a pretty smart idea, but we'll see how the contents are. If they're not very good, we can always replace them with some stuff that is good. So, first up, let's see if we can pull some of this stuff out. Alright, we've got some cordage. And, looks like pretty good quality paracord. I'm not sure what reading it is. On the tag it says it's approximately 33 feet in length, so we'll go with that. I'm not going to undo this just to measure it, but it looks like pretty good standard paracord. And then we've got one of these things, and I've seen these before. They're pretty cheap little things, but you've got a compass in the top, and uh, let's see if the compass is accurate, and it is. Then there's a little fire steel right here. You've got a lanyard, a whistle. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's a ball in the whistle to give it some real, real sound. And then this thing opens up and it is supposed to be watertight with a little rubber seal around there. And there's nothing inside. Now, what you would do is put some matches in here, so we'll do that before the end of this video. But as is, it doesn't have anything inside, and then it's got a mirror in the cap. So not too bad, you got a compass, you got a mirror for signaling, a whistle for signaling, a little fire steel right here, and then a waterproof container for some matches or what have you. And a little lanyard with some extra cordage. It doesn't hurt. Then we've got <clears throat> another carabiner. I'm not sure why they put this in here. And another compass. So this seems a little bit redundant. Now it does have a flashlight right here. And let's see. Probably has a spacer. Yeah. Usually when you get these things new there's a little plastic spacer to keep the battery from being exhausted while it's in storage. So yeah, there it goes. And it's got a, a little LED light. It's not bad. It's actually not too bad. So the light is good, but the carabiner and the compass are sort of redundant because we've already got those over here. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have it, but uh, you could certainly put better stuff in place of it, more useful stuff, since you've already got those two things. Then we've got a little fake Swiss Army knife, and I've shown you these in another video. There's a knife, nail file, and, oh, what is this? Yeah, a pair of scissors. Very cheap. Uh, these fake Swiss Army knives are, are, are just not very good. Um, I mean, it's better than nothing. I'll give it that. But, you know, the, I mean, look at that. I mean, this thing's, <laughs> this thing's so cheap. Uh, you'd be better off just going to the store and spending 10 or 15 bucks on a real Swiss Army Knife Classic and putting that in here instead. Alright, then we've got... This is going to be hard to get out. we got an emergency blanket. Let's see if we can get it out. <laughs> Boy! They don't make this easy, do they? Whew! Good God, that was hard. So we got an emergency blanket and it's your basic Mylar blanket. Not bad. Then we've got a compressed towel. 
These are the kind you just add some water to and they blow up into a towel. We've got a sewing kit. Just your basic sewing kit. And then we've got a couple band-aids that came out. That's not bad. Those are always handy. And here's something else that's going to be difficult to get out. The emergency poncho. <laughs> Here we go again. Okay, that one came out a little easier. So then we've got an emergency poncho. Hooded rain poncho. Polyethylene, lightweight, easy to carry. Convenient, one size fits all. Reusable. And it measures 50 inches, 50 to 52 inches by 80 inches. And this is really funny. Look at this picture on here. It's like they took a picture of two models wearing this poncho, but they didn't want to, I don't know, they didn't want to pay for the picture or something. So they sort of photoshopped these faces on here. It's really bizarre. Or maybe they were Chinese people that they photoshopped on an American face. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty funny. But yeah, it's just your basic, basic poncho. So overall, this kit is pretty lacking. I mean, there are some good items in the kit, but there are also some big holes. We've got the water bottle, which is fantastic, but there's no way to purify water. We've got the waterproof match container, but there are no matches or any other way to get a fire going. And then we've got this knockoff Swiss Army knife, which is going to last about five minutes and end up being pretty worthless. The good news, however, is that there appeared to be plenty of extra room in the water bottle. So what we're going to do now is add and replace some items in this kit and hopefully we'll take this from being fairly mediocre to being something that might actually be useful in a survival situation. Okay, so the first thing we'll deal with is the multi-tool situation. As I said, this thing is pretty much worthless, so we'll go ahead and toss this and I'm going to replace it with two items actually. First up, we've got a real Victorinox Classic. This is what that other thing tries to emulate very badly, I might add. So it's got a good pair of scissors, a good little knife, and then a nail file with a screwdriver. And it's also got the tweezers and the toothpick. So this is a good quality Victorinox knife, and these cost about 15 bucks, no big deal. And then I'm also gonna add a real knife. And what I've chosen is this. This is a Buck 284 Bantam. And I chose this because it's a good little knife, but it's not expensive. It's about 20 bucks, and it also opens one-handed, which might come in handy in a survival situation. It's got plastic scales, but it's a good little knife that doesn't cost much. You know, when it comes to putting multi-tools and knives in survival kits, if it's a kit that you're never going to use unless you absolutely have to, you know, you don't want to put something super expensive in there. It'd be easy to put something like a Leatherman Wave in this kit, but that's a waste of money for something that you're probably never going to use or hopefully never going to use. So you kind of have to balance price and quality and how often you intend to use it. And so that's why I've chosen these things. They're not that expensive, but they've got good quality. So if you have to use them, they'll work well, but they're not so expensive or valuable that you're ever going to miss them while they're in the kit. Next, we'll take on the waterproof container. So I'm gonna add some stuff to the interior first. So the first thing I'll add is 10 Strike Anywhere matches. Got those in there. Now, I don't always trust Strike Anywhere matches. They're nice to have, but it's always nice to have a striker as well. So I'm gonna add a match striker surface in here as well. I'm also going to add a ferro rod, something that's nicer than what's on the side here because I don't trust that one very much. So we'll add this little ferro rod here. And then I'm going to add a little piece of fat wood, which is always good for starting a fire. Stick that in there. See if we can fit it. It should fit. There we go. All right. So that takes care of the interior now. On the outside, on this lanyard here, I'm going to add something else. So, I'll undo the lanyard. Just 
a moment. And I'm gonna add this. This is a ferro rod striker. So we've got that nicer ferro rod on the inside and then we've got a nice striker on the outside. Now, you could probably use the Victorinox Classic or the Buck to strike the ferro rod, but I like to have a separate ferro rod striker as well. That way you've got multiple options. And we'll tie this lanyard back. And there we go. So now, this thing's pretty good. We've got the whistle, we've got the compass, we've got a ferro rod striker and a lanyard. We've got the mirror on the inside, 10 strike anywhere matches, a nice ferro rod on the inside, a match striker pad, and then a little piece of fat wood. So now this thing is looking pretty good. And we've got a pretty good way to get a fire going. We can signal and we can get directions with the compass. Not bad. Next, let's deal with the water situation. As I said, we've got this great bottle, but there's no way to purify the water. So I'm gonna add six of these aqua tabs and each tab will purify one liter of water. So that means we can purify six bottles of water since this holds one liter. We'll put that right there. And then I'm gonna add a fairly luxurious item. I'm gonna add three of these Melita coffee filters. And these can be used to filter the water before you purify it. So when you gather the water in the bottle, you put it through the filter, filters out any dirt and grime and so forth, and then the aqua tabs will make it safe to drink. So we'll put these over here. The next thing I'll add is this little spool of duct tape, which can be used for all sorts of stuff, including medical stuff. And that's the last thing we'll tackle is the first aid medical situation because we've only got two band-aids. So first, I'm gonna add two more regular band-aids. And then I'll add two of these really large band-aids. Then I'll add, if there's room, when we put it in the bottle, hopefully, two gauze pads. And then lastly, is this mini med kit that has two Imodiums, two Benadryls, six Ibuprofens, and two Acetaminophens, or Tylenol. And then the final thing I'll add is this little Ziploc bag. And into the Ziploc bag, I'm gonna put the first aid stuff, the medicines, the sewing kit, and the water purification tablets. And that way it'll be nice and compartmentalized in that Ziploc bag. All right, now comes the moment of truth. Can I fit all this stuff back into the bottle? Let's find out. So, do the low-hanging fruit first. We'll get the poncho in there. You know, as I'm packing this up, I decided that I would add two more items. Into the baggie, I'm gonna add two little zip ties. Those won't take up much space. And then what I'm gonna do is close up the baggie. I get all the air out of it. And then I'm gonna put a ranger band around it. The ranger band is just a really thick rubber band. And these come in handy all sorts of stuff. So we'll put it around the Ziploc baggie and that way it'll keep everything nice and tight to go into the bottle. All right, looks like we had some room to spare. Wow. So with this extra space up here, I could probably add a few more items to this kit still, but I think for the time being, I'm just gonna leave it as is and maybe I'll come back to it later. But yeah, this was the Rothko Water Bottle Survival Kit. And on the screen, you can see a list of what was in the kit originally and what's in the kit now. And I think you'll agree it's a much better kit now and it's something that could actually be useful in a survival situation. But let me know what you think. Is there something that I shouldn't have put in there or something different? or maybe I left something out completely. 
Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested in hearing what you think. But for now, that's it. This has been Kitbash Survival. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.